All right, let's jump into some more asks. By the way, I just saw your Daryl Dixon season six analysis, and I think the reason why Cordon, no, Codron, <laughs> I say his name wrong all the time, didn't kill Laurent is just because he literally couldn't bring himself to do that to a kid. Yeah, probably. He just wanted to kill Daryl, but like you said, Daryl was helping Laurent, and he just couldn't do it. Also, I wouldn't label him a cold-blooded killer just yet. Look at Negan, for example, what he did and where he is now. I'm still not over what he did, but I also came to love him now, lol, but I still can't watch 701. I just skipped the episode when I rewatched, too painful. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. I really don't watch 701 very often. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think you're right about Cadron. Um, he's, I actually really liked him, even as a villain. He's just very charismatic, and I just, I couldn't help but like him. And I guess that that's true of Negan, too, so... Um, and Norman's always saying that the guy who plays him is, like, super cool and they're buddies. So, yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot to add, but um, it'll be interesting to see where they go with him in Daryl Dixon Season 2. I'm assuming he'll be around since he wasn't killed off, and I think he's a really fun character. So, I'm with you. I, I agree. Um, I read somewhere in a comment section that there is deleted footage between Still and Alone. I've only seen a very short deleted scene of Still, but nothing else. Um, I don't think we know for sure that there's deleted footage between those two episodes. I think people want to think that there is because we had a bit of a time jump where it went from hot weather weather to cold weather. And so people are hoping that there's um, footage that we didn't see in there. I'm not really convinced that there is. Um, I mean, of course, I would welcome any footage, you know, of the two of them together. But with the missing 17 days, we actually have a ton of evidence that that was filmed. Um, you know, it was seen by the spoiler cameras and we have pictures and we have a lot of it being hidden behind a wall and we have, um, someone looked, who looked like Emily and was dressed as Beth with the blonde ponytail and the yellow polo who was seen going into the cabin. I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff that, that you know, we know they filmed something there that we haven't seen. But I've never seen anything that specifically tells us they filmed something that came between Still and Alone. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It also could be that people are sort of mixing things up and that they, uh, you know, they hear talk of the missing 17 days and so they think that came from season four, but really it didn't. It came from season five. So um, I couldn't say for sure. And obviously if there's missing footage, we don't have it yet, so we don't know. But I wouldn't necessarily get my hopes up about that. I think the only missing footage that we are aware of is the stuff from season five and that wouldn't have come between still and alone. So... Um, you know, don't get me wrong, I hope I'm wrong, and that we get more footage, of course, but I just wouldn't necessarily count on that. Um, probably unrelated, but I felt so bad about Quinn. He was just starting to show his goodish and pretty funny side, and he dies. I think he realized he fucked up real bad when he was with Isabel and wanted to make up for it, but then it was just too late. Um, but I also totally get why Isabel didn't forgive him even in death. Yeah, Quinn always felt like a character who was going to die to me. Even though he seemed like he wanted to make amends, he was just too self-centered and he was just all about himself. And I, I don't know, he's a character kind of like Gregory was <laughs> in the flagship show or I'm trying to think of other characters that are that way. I mean, eventually... Even if, I, I think sometimes they genuinely do want to make amends, but like the instant something changes, they're back to being all about number one again. So I just don't think anyone really trusted that he truly had changed. He was just all out for himself. And then that's what's eventually going to lead to your death in the apocalypse. You know what I mean? That's always the case. So um, it would have been nice, you know, if he could have had a redemption arc, but I just didn't feel like he was a character that was written for a redemption arc. I think he was always going to be a villain that they were going to kill off by the end of the season. But, yeah, I mean, I feel you. Um, I've read some theories saying that we will probably be seeing Beth in Daryl Dixon season two, particularly at the Louvre Museum. Do you think this will also be the case? And most importantly, how is Beth also going to be in France? Thank you. Um, yes, I do think that it's true. So there is a lot of Mary Magdalene symbolism around Beth and Daryl. And <laughs> this is is going to sound a little bit strange, but the gender roles are reversed. And it's because Beth, we know, was the Christ figure. She had the cross on when she, it, uh, Grady. And then they talked about her as a sacrifice. And that would actually make Daryl Mary Magdalene, <laughs> which I know is a little bit counterintuitive. But 
it's just the symbolism that's there as though they're using that as a template in a lot of ways. And um, Galadriel Jones has done a lot of research on the Da Vinci Code and them using the Da Vinci Code as a template. And that's kind of where the Mary Magdalene symbolism comes in. And now we're going to see them at the Louvre. And there's been a lot of foreshadow of this in various ways. We saw, let's see, in season five, Daryl looked at the Last Supper painting in Gabriel's church. Of course, there were all the scriptures in Gabriel's church that all pointed to resurrection. Um, But specifically in the world beyond, we had something where um, they kind of recreated, they tried to recreate a museum of art for a particular character. And in that case, you know, they were out in the wilderness and they just had like paper pictures of the paintings and they tacked them up all over and it was actually very sweet that they recreated that for her but it was a major foreshadowing of artwork a lot of which is in the Louvre and they were kind of like trying to recreate the Louvre and that was a foreshadow so when we heard that they were filming in the Louvre that wasn't shocking because they had foreshadowed that but because of the Mary Magdalene symbolism and the Christ symbolism and um just a lot of things we've seen that line up with the Da Vinci Code template yeah we definitely think that that's going to be a big deal Uh, We certainly hope that we're going to see her there. Even if we don't see her specifically there, I think we're going to get a lot of hints of her, and it's going to be really, really important symbolism. But I think we're all hoping that that is where we see Beth or that she has already shown up by that point so that she'll be in that scene or or something like that. Obviously, we don't know for sure. But yeah, um, in terms of how she will also be in France, I mean, we don't know the exact mechanism by which she will arrive there, of course. But it probably will have something to do with the CRM because they're everywhere. And honestly, I was a little bit surprised that we didn't see more of the CRM in Daryl's story in season one. Because back in, um, what is it called? Diverged. We saw a lot of him running into military walkers that I believe represented the CRM, you know, because they're a militia, they're a military. And so I really thought that we would see a lot more of the CRM in season one. But... We also know that Carol, uh, well, Melissa, backed out of doing season one. So it could be that they were originally going to do more with the CRM in season one, but they sort of pushed it and just told the story of him and Isabel and Laurent in the first season. Um, But I do think that we're going to see him running into the CRM. In Diverge, there's a part where his bike breaks down, and then he also hears wolves howling in the distance. And remember, Beth is the wolf who's going to come home. You know what I mean? So it's it's just all hints of what's going to happen while he's separated from Carol. Now, I know that Carol is on her way to him now, um, but even so, I feel like, um, I I just feel like we're going to see a lot more of that in season two. So we don't know how Beth will come to be there. I mean, we didn't know how Daryl was going to come to be in France either, and they came up with a way that he got there. But I think Beth will be um, more to do with the CRM. And I mean, even right now, we don't know exactly what the people who put Daryl on that boat were doing. We don't, I mean, they were clearly taking prisoners across the ocean, but why? Were they going to be experimented on? Were they, you know, what, what plans did they have for them? We, we never found out, not really. And so it could be that those people work for the CRM or something, you know, I think he'll come in contact with them and something about them will be how Beth ends up in France. But beyond that, um, obviously we don't know. We couldn't really say for sure. So I do think that the Louvre Museum, that part is going to be super, super important and that it will have something to do with Beth. All right. Do you remember if there is a scene in TWD season 9 or 10 where we see a brief shot of Daryl looking at the paintings of Glenn, Beth, and the rest of Maggie's family? I remember it so clearly, but I can't seem to find it anywhere. I need it for an edit. Yes, um, that was the storm episode where they did the snow. So I believe that was 9-16. I want to say it was the last episode of the season, but I know that episode is called The Storm. So for most of it, they're out in the snow trying to get back, and then at the very end, they finally make it back to Hilltop. And that's when Lydia is looking at the pictures and Daryl and her talk about them a little bit. I mean, he doesn't really tell her much, but he says someday he will. And we do see him looking at the pictures. So I think that's what you're thinking of. Check season nine and look for the episode called The Storm, which I'm pretty sure is the last episode of the season. So I was rewatching Alone yesterday and there was a scene where Daryl lies down in the coffin and Beth plays the piano. And then the scene that follows is Daryl carrying Beth bridal style and okay, all good. But then my mind just was like, wait, where did she sleep? Like, where did she, like, did she just sleep on the piano? I need answers. <laughs> yeah. Um, people don't talk about this as much anymore, but back when the episodes were airing, this was everybody's question. We wanted to know what exactly the sleeping arrangements were. I mean, even when they were out in the woods before they, 
I mean, they didn't stay at the Moonshine Shack, so they had to go out in the woods after that. And then we have this little bit of a time jump where it turns to colder weather, and you're just assuming that they're sleeping out in the woods all that time, you know, just wandering around. Um, so everybody wanted to know what that looked like exactly. And I don't think that there was, would have been anything inherently sexual about it because they never went canon and they never got to that point in their relationship. But I also think that the writers very intentionally did not show us that because um, because they knew it was not going to go canon right at that point because they didn't want to be hinting at that sort of thing. So yeah, I do think it was intentional that we didn't see anything like that, even though a lot of people wanted to. <laughs> but I'm assuming that they just, I mean, they would have slept next to each other, you know, in the same camp, and probably maybe only one of them sleeping at a time to keep watch and that sort of thing. So that's why people have all kinds of um, fan fiction about this and headcanons about this, but we don't, we don't really know. And um, I, I don't, uh, this is probably not going to be everyone's favorite opinion. I don't think that was particularly relevant to the story at the time. You know, that was kind of not the point. Um, even though we would have liked to have seen it and read something into it, it's just, I don't think that we're necessarily missing something by not having seen that, because we'll see plenty of that when she returns and they actually get to the romance. But yeah, I, I totally feel you, and we would all love to have seen that, so we're, we're with you. <laughs> <clears throat> Me and my sister always talk about wanting a zombie apocalypse, obviously with TWD zombies and not mutant not mutated, lol. I need to know if we're the only crazy ones or if someone else can relate. By the way, I love your channel slash Tumblr account, living for it, lol. Thank you. Um, I mean, I don't know if everybody wants the zombie apocalypse or not. There, there are definitely aspects of it that would be kind of interesting and um, that I think people want to experience, but when it comes right down to it, it means that all of our conveniences and our comforts would be gone. So I don't think very many people actually want to experience that. <laughs> but, you know, it makes for really good fiction and uh, really good storytelling. So I, I do understand um, why you feel that way. But I don't know that very many people will admit to wanting it. I don't know. Um, and you also have to realize that even though there's a lot of reality in this show, you know, they, they really don't sugarcoat it. At the same time, I mean, a lot of the reason that we feel that way is because of the characters in the show who start to feel like family to us because we watch them all the time. And in a real zombie apocalypse, yeah, Daryl's not going to be there. Hate to break it to you guys, but he's just not. <laughs> you know? So it probably wouldn't be quite as fun as we imagine it to be. That's all I'm saying. But we can always fantasize. And, you know, actually, it was funny. I live in Utah, and I saw a, a study that was done. I mean, it was years ago now that said, you know, where is the best place to survive a zombie apocalypse? And it was the Rocky Mountains. And the reasons behind it were just that they're so high up, it would be hard for walkers to reach it from outside places. And of course, you would have to deal with everyone who turned into a walker who was already here. But walkers, they, you know, we're, we're starting to see in these later seasons, walkers that do climb. But even so, there aren't very many of them. And climbing up a wagon wheel or even the side of a house is not the same thing as climbing a mountain. So most walkers take the path of least resistance, so they're a lot less likely to climb a mountain to get people. So the idea is that if it really happened, people would congregate in the tops of the mountains because that's going to be the safest place. And I just thought that was interesting. I was like, hey, I'm already in the right place to solve to uh, survive the zombie apocalypse. So bring it on, you know, I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> All right, what is your favorite Beth and Daryl scene? Mine is probably the one in Still where they get drunk together and then have a fight and then have a conversation under the moonlight, but also the dinner scene right before Daryl opens the door. Most of the times I pause it right before he gets up because in my head, until hopefully she comes back, they stayed together in the funeral home. Aw. Yes, I'm crazy. <laughs> You're not crazy. Um, yeah, I talked about this the other day when they just asked my favorite Beth scene. I, I don't know that I can pick just one. I love all of the scenes they're in together. Um, obviously, the fight in Still is a big one that we can watch over and over again and just pick apart to our heart's content. But there's the dinner scene. Um, I, I, I like the nuances in a lot of the scenes that they're in. So I even like the really small interactions, like um, when he's or when she's got his crossbow and he's teaching her to track with it. And he's touching his face. Like, it's it's been proven that men tend to touch their face when they are interested in a woman and staring at her. So 
I really love just watching him stare at her and touch his face. And he does the same thing when he's laying in the coffin and she's playing the piano. And then there's the part where he comes up behind her when she's playing the piano and he's staring at her. So I guess um, anytime that Daryl is staring at Beth, then maybe that's my favorite scene. <laughs> but, I, but I really do love them all. There's so many great scenes of them together. And that's why everybody loved them so much and shipped them so hard because they just have this amazing chemistry and it's just fascinating to watch them together and it's always very sweet. So... I'm with you. I wish they would have stayed together and had more screen time together and we could get more scenes like that, but hopefully we will get some more very soon. All right, I was thinking about Beth coming back and obviously getting with Daryl and yada yada. <laughs> and that's going to be a huge internet break, unlike the Daryl Dixon episode. Was it episode five? I don't know. Anyway, the internet is going to break because she's actually alive, but it's then going to quite literally collapse when they get together. All the haters will be hating, but TWD producers slash writers don't seem to easily chicken out, so I'm here for... I'm all here for it. Literally can't wait. I just feel like it's closer and closer for some reason. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I think it'll break the internet in a good way for the most part. I mean, the biggest thing we're going to have to watch out for are the dark ship and other people who ship Daryl with somebody else. But I honestly think, I don't know. I actually feel like they've been a little quieter lately, and that could totally be my perception of it because I, like I said, I've been so busy. I have not been online. But I feel like there are a lot of carolers who are finally starting to get the picture that it's not going to happen with Daryl and Carol. Of course, there are still the haters who are really loud online, and I don't think they are ever going to go away. But I feel like there's a lot less of them than there used to be. Um, but that doesn't mean that they won't come back and rail and scream when Beth shows up, because what's going to happen is not only will they know that their ship is not happening, but they're going to be pissed at us because we were right all along and they were not. <laughs> and there's nothing we can do about that. I mean, we were right all along and it is what it is, you know, and we're, there's nothing we can do about them being pissed at us, but we just have to kind of be prepared for it and know that they're probably going to scream real loud. Um, but yeah, I'm not worried about the writers chickening out because they've told us before that they're going to tell the story that they set up to tell no, no matter what the audience thinks. And that in most cases, in most shows that would sound either really arrogant or really ignorant because a show's um, success is based on the audience watching, right? So you have to pay attention to what your audience is saying. And I've, I've learned that from, watching behind the scenes of other shows where they will say, well, this is what we wanted to do, but the audience hated it and threatened to stop watching it. So we had to change course, you know, otherwise their show was going to get canceled. That's true of most shows, but the walking dead is not most shows. Okay. They have such a huge empire right now. And such a huge, um, so many people watching, you know, even these spinoffs, like it's insane, the viewership that they're getting. So they can do pretty much whatever they want to do. And when they say they don't care what the audience thinks, I really don't think that they're talking about, the TWD viewership at large, they're talking directly to the shippers. So they're talking directly to the, to the carolers. And they're saying, even if you're angry about it, we're still going to tell the story that we have set up all these years ago to tell. And they've been very, very open about that. And then there's the fact that we're seeing all this be fulfilled right now. You know, this is stuff that even if we're not talking about Beth, even if we're talking about Rick and Michonne, this is stuff that they planned um, more than five years ago. I mean, if it was planned in season five... That was 10 years ago, and they're still telling that story. Even though they had to wait, they had to get through the comic book stuff, um, they're still telling the story that they set up to tell, and it is very obvious from watching season five what story they set up to tell with Daryl and Beth, and we're just waiting for it to finally materialize for us. So I agree. I feel like she's very, very close. It's getting closer and closer, and we're getting so many things lining up right now that we have been waiting for. So we're just waiting for it to all happen. I'm with you. The ones who live f uh, final being released on Easter, it's the perfect time to reveal that Beth is alive. I I'm really trying hard not to get my hopes up that we're going to see her in the finale <laughs> because I don't want to be disappointed. And like I said the other day, even if we don't see her in the finale, I really think we're going to see her in season two of Daryl Dixon. So I'm not going to be super disappointed if we don't see her in the finale. But I won't lie. Um, that would be great. <laughs> and you're right that it's really hard to ignore the Easter thing. Um, the seven-year thing, we've got an eclipse coming that same year. I mean, Gimple would almost be stupid not to use this to reveal her, even if he wasn't going to. But, you know, of course, we can't say for sure. So I really, really hope that you're right. Let's put it that way. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I've gone a little bit over, but I've got a few more questions to answer, so I will probably do at least one more video on these. See you soon. <laughs>